Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to our Tuesday chat. I'm Andy, and this is True Blue Quilt, a place to enjoy, experiment, and excel as you quilt. And I do a quilt chat on Tuesdays at 8 a.m. Pacific, and I'm so glad that you can join me, whether or not you're here live. Just leave a comment below. I try to answer all the comments that I get and reach out and really build this quilt community because that's the best part of quilting is making those connections with uh with other people, other people that enjoy the same craft. So I so appreciate you being here and being part of the True Blue crew. So the topic today, I was going to start out with some charity blocks. I have been working on a log cabin style charity quilt, but I don't have those blocks handy today. They're put away for a little bit. Um, but I have a local quilt group. Um, let me know in the comments if you have a group of quilters that you get together to sew with. Um, I have a group we get together once a month at a local quilt shop. They have graciously given us their classroom space for just an open sewing time. And that is so much fun to get together and quilt on whatever strikes your fancy. So to give the group a little bit of structure, I have come, I have chosen a different block each month and people can, and a color scheme. And that way people can make them and we'll put them together for charity quilts. So the first one I did was my Lazy Lemoyne Star. And you can find that in my uh, video list if you go back on the channel um, there's a tutorial for this i love making this block with half square triangles it works up so easily and you can do it in a variety of sizes so i wanted bright colors on a neutral background so i chose this uh, white fabric has a little bit of a blue uh, print behind it and one of our other members made this version in pretty soft uh, greens and purples. And then another gal had already cut big strips. So she just replaced that center pinwheel with a solid strip of fabric and then used half square triangles to make the star points. So that is a great version. And again, those bright colors will be so much fun. Isn't this one fantastic? A uh, floral and a peachy orange fabric there make a really bright, fun uh, star pinwheel block. And some other blues and purples, so, so pretty. And then the different uh, center square. Um, so you can see, you know, the same basic construction this is called a sawtooth star and this is called a Lemoyne star. So quilter, you know, quilters have a lot of names for the same block. And that brings me to, uh, I just pulled a Eleanor Burns. She throws all her threads just off, off onto the floor and vacuum later. Um, let me reach back to my tracking sheet for our summer fun road trip challenge we are in the last few weeks of the summer fun road trip challenge and the video description has the link to find a tracking sheet where we have been making notes of the different states that i talk about on my live shows and you can get additional points for quilting activities across the united states so wherever you're located mark that state off and collect the points for that. If you do some online shopping from a quilt store in a different state, that will count. If you take a road trip, uh, that will count as quilting activities across the United States. And um, as I was going down my list, there are, you know, I don't have a lot, I've traveled to a lot of states, but I don't have a lot of quilting stories for some of these other states. But um, 
I just mentioned Ohio Star, so we'll check off Ohio today for that quilt block. And um, uh, Paducah is in Kentucky, so that's a big quilting destination. So let's make sure we cross off Kentucky. And um, Kansas, Kansas Troubles uh, comes to mind. I don't know the full history of that uh, quilt block, um, but, or if it was just a newspaper series, there's some, I'm thinking of some um, you know, 1920s, 1930s serial quilt series that they talked about in the newspapers that might have been the Kansas Troubles. Um, so if anyone can drop me a note and tell me the history of how Kansas Troubles got associated with quilting, I'd love to hear about that. Um, and of course, uh, Sisters Oregon is another great quilting destination. So we're kind of going cross country there from Oregon to Kansas and Kentucky um, with a brief stop in Ohio. So four different states that you can check off today on your summer fun road trip challenge. But I am going to do a little bit of stitching today because I need to make the next block for my uh, quilt group to sew when we meet in a couple weeks. So uh, brace yourself for some uh, motion sickness as I move the computer. And I'll try and be very, very smooth and gentle with this. So here we go. Moving. We're moving. And I need to adjust my fabric here because I had it all laid out. I am making some nine patch blocks so that we can do the disappearing nine patch. Uh, and you can, I'll tilt that so you can see a little bit of my sewing space. And please drop me a note in the chat if you are here live. I love to know who I am talking to. I have gotten to know so many great quilting friends from these uh, quilt chats. So I appreciate it. We usually have Cindy and Heidi and Brenda stops in. So hello. 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 Um, so I like to lay out my blocks. I've pre-cut some squares and I will tell you all about this as I get them sewn together. As you may know from my channel, I am an Island Batik ambassador this year. So, uh, they had a challenge back in February for charity quilting. So if you go back to uh, February, type in uh, charity quilts, true blue quilts, uh, and you'll those videos will pop up. And you can see the great variety of charities that the ambassador team supported. Patriotic quilts come to mind um, with Quilts of Valor is always a great charity. And um, their Project Linus is a na nationwide quilting charity that I like to support or I will be supporting here soon. I see their many of the local quilt stores are drop off locations for Project Linus. So that comes to mind pretty easily. And there may, you may have local charities that you support. For those things. So I'm making two different blocks. Uh, so that's what you see me doing. And my focal fabric is this fun novelty print that has just different sports equipment. You see soccer balls and footballs and baseballs and basketballs, skateboard, hockey stick, bat, baseball bat. So for a nine patch, you can make your nine patch any size. 
when I am doing a disappearing nine patch, I like to make my squares a little bit bigger because you will be slicing them and adding more seams. So they will shrink quite a bit. So uh, keep that in mind. But I just sew my two fabrics together and then we'll have to add the third row on this whole pile. So that's what I will be working on. And hopefully I can keep my uh, layout in mind. As I sew all these blocks together, I am tr putting my colored fabric in between my novelty fabric to make a row for my nine patch. So when you work with a team to make blocks, you get wonderful scrappy quilts and you can distribute the workload. Always more fun to get things done in a group. Um, and I love to see everybody's fabric choices. That makes it so fun to, um, I, I just love scrappy quilts. So uh, it's stick to a color scheme and throw all sorts of different stuff together. The problem then becomes finishing your group project because you need someone who is willing to uh, sew all the blocks together and then do the quilting. But you don't have to go overboard with charity quilts. Uh, it's a great opportunity to practice some simple, whether you want to do stitch in the ditch, some straight line quilting, cross hatching across the quilt, or even uh, try your free motion. Um, swirls work up really nice and easily across your quilt. Just kind of curly Q quilting will work up very nice and give it good texture and not take too much time. And then binding. Um, some people, it's kind of a love-hate relationship. Where do you stand on binding? Are you a, uh, is that a dreaded part of the quilting process or uh, just, you know, you're one step closer to a finish is what I uh, enjoy about binding. And I just watched a video about uh, not breaking your thread, being able to attach the whole binding without cutting your thread and restarting on the corners and stuff. So I'm going to try that um, on my next project. Okay, so I have my rows together and now I can um, finger press uh, on this one, I think I will do the, I'm going to press towards my colored fabric, my plain squares of that blue, so that I don't have a seam showing on my light center, um, is how I decided that. So just finger press along those seams, and then I, since I did them in opposite directions, I can make this one nest. So I will, I finally got smart and put a pin cushion at my sewing machine and another pin cushion at the ironing table where I usually pin my borders because I would pin my borders and I'd have the pin cushion there at the table and then I'd come over to my machine and I'd sew and I'd take pins out and have nowhere to put them. So you always need an extra pin cushion. <laughs> Um, and some people wear the wristlet pin cushions. I have, you know, it's been 20 years since I wore a watch. Um, since we're so tied to our computers and our phones nowadays, nobody wears a watch. Um, so I've gotten out of the habit of having something on my wrist, and that just seems awkward to me. So. Same thing with a thimble. I never got into the habit of wearing a thimble, and so they feel very awkward to me when I have tried them. So 
when you're binding or doing hand sewing, do you use a thimble? I'm so curious about everybody's sewing habits. So if you are just joining us and wondering about the Summer Fun Road Trip Challenge, we are trekking across country. Um, we started off our chat with Sisters Oregon, one of the great quilt shows. Um, they have an outdoor quilt show each summer that would just be a fabulous vacation on my bucket list. Um, of course, we want to hit Paducah, Kentucky uh, and, you know, Mecca hometown for quilters. The great uh, quilt show in Paducah every year is another bucket list destination. Um, and then I was talking about different quilt blocks with state names. So we've got our Ohio Star and um, I know I mentioned something else. Ohio Star, Kansas Troubles. I was wondering where that name came from. I'll have to do some research. So I guess it was just those four. Oregon, Kentucky, Ohio, and Kansas for the Summer Fun Road Trip Challenge today. Um, and then I am sewing my rows together for my disappearing nine patch block. I needed some samples for my quilt group. So that's what we are doing here this morning. Um, I hope you join me every Tuesday here on YouTube. I also do a fun Friday live broadcast on Facebook. So make sure you are following True Blue Quilts over on Facebook. We'd love to see you over there. But um, I am having so much fun with my True Blue crew here on YouTube. So I'm so glad you are joining me for our quilt chat each Tuesday at 8 a.m. Grab a cup of coffee. Or water. I've been having headaches lately. We've had quite a heavy um, rainy season, our monsoons here in the desert southwest. And so with all the thunderstorms rolling through, it really, the pressure changes and weather changes start to give me headaches. So I know I need to uh, drink more water. So there's your reminder for the day to drink water. <laughs> Trying to stay healthy. Okay, so I've got my rows done for my nine patch. One, um, like I said, I'm doing two different colors. I'm doing one variation with blue and one variation with green. So let me get this other row put on. And places are always asking for uh, kids quilts, whether you donate to a hospital, to your first responders. I know um, there are some groups that donate quilts and then the first responders, whether it's police or fire, can keep quilts in their uh, vehicles. And then in a, you know, I'm imagining a fire or, a, you know, some situation where there might be kids that the police have to take somewhere, they can give them a quilt and kind of um, ease the trauma there of that situation. So uh, lots of worthy causes for our quilt donations. So um, if you get bitten by the quilt bug um, and become prolific like I have, I just, you know, I'm quilting all the time and I stitch pretty fast. And since I have a long arm, I can get quilts finished. Um, fairly quickly. And then you just, you're, <laughs> where do they go? Um, I have 42 quilts. I don't need that many quilts on my bed here in the desert. So it's nice to adopt a charity and quilt for them. So, And I'm just, I'm chain piecing. So I keep my blocks attached and then just uh, snip the previous unit as I go and just keep 
something under my needle. A friend was teaching me how to make a bag. And I've always used leader ender little bits of fabric um, to collect my thread. You know, when I'm chain piecing, it's always nice to have some little scrap to, to roll through the machine. Um, and I just thought it was part of the chain piecing process. And she actually made a little fabric sandwich the same width as the padding that she was using in her bag. So sometimes that interfacing is a little bit stiffer when you're making bags. And she was saying, if you put that leader ender through the machine and it's the same thickness as your bag or the next piece that you're sewing, that keeps that needle and your sewing machine presser foot at the same level and you don't have any problems as the foot tries to adjust to different widths. So fabric uh, leader ender pieces are very useful there to help you sew when you've got thicker units going through your machine. Um, obviously with just two layers of fabric, it's not that much of a problem, but you can see how if a presser foot was trying to go up and down over different widths of fabric materials, if you're, you know, making bags that have multiple layers of um, interfacing and um, batting and wadding and everything, you want a consistent level of your presser foot. So uh, the definite strategic use of leaders and enders. Almost done with my nine patches here. Okay, I'm gonna slide that leader ender scrap through and then I can trim my blocks. So I have a nine patch with my novelty fabric. I'm using a sports theme there and this bright green fabric. That's one version. And then I've got another version of my novelty fabric with blue. So I need to snap a quick picture of these and then uh, because I'm doing a demo for my quilt group. And oh, let's see, am I, hopefully I got everything in there on my camera. And we will, just because it'll show up nicer on screen version. So moving the camera a bit so that I can uh, slice up my nine patch um, to make the disappearing nine patch. There are just two cuts that you do on your nine patch. So it helps to have a rotating mat when you are doing this. And I, and you can do, you don't have to really measure um, it's nice to find the exact center of your block. So measure from the seam line and cut a vertical line. And then you would not want to move your fabric, but I will hold up. See, I sliced that right down the center of my block. Now I'm going to turn 90 degrees so that I can cut, make another cut. So you're just making a plus sign across your quilt and cutting right across the center of that middle square. So then you have these little blocks. And of course you could piece a block that looked like this quadrant, but disappearing nine patch is fun because once you get these quarters done, you can turn them a bunch of different ways and make different block combinations. So I am just going to alternate my squares. So I'm going to put two, put them together like this, and then I'll turn the two rows upside down 
and um, make a new block. But for my um, sewing group, we will scramble all of the quadrants together and really get a fun scrappy quilt going. So let me pull this back over so you guys are a little bit closer as I sew my disappearing nine patch block together and have my sample for my sewing group that meets next weekend. So that'll be fun. And I do want to recap, we had four states to check off on our Summer Fun Road Trip Challenge. We had, um, we started in Oregon with the sisters. Quilt show in Oregon. And then we are trekking across to Paducah, Kentucky for another quilt show. And we're going to wave to Ohio and thank them for the Ohio Star quilt block. And then our fourth state today is Kansas because I have heard the phrase Kansas troubles as a possible quilt block. I need to do some research and remind myself if that, if I'm just making it up or, you know, I saw a book called Kansas troubles one time, but I think it had to do with uh, perhaps the dust bowl and the great depression. Somebody made a quilt block at one time there in the um, 1930s, there were, uh, newspaper, the can was it Kansas City Star? It's, I like I said, I need to do my research before I just start making things up. I was a history teacher, having to fill time in lectures, and you just kind of go off on a tangent and make things up. And it, you know, hey, why don't you know Joey in the back row? Why don't you look that up? Because um, when I just my final years in teaching, um, all the kids had, you know, iPad, well, phones too, but iPads that the school gave them so that all their textbooks and stuff were online. So you could just say to somebody, hey, Google that. I don't remember uh, all the details of the story I'm trying to tell. So, um, I, I remember things I've read, but I don't always remember the details, so. There is that. One final seam. You can see how my disappearing nine patch is coming together. And it will be fun to see how my quilt group interprets this challenge that I have set out for them. I asked for novelty fabric and a white square in the center. And then blue or green because someone had asked for a more uh, masculine color scheme. We did, I'll do a show and tell here again in a second if you missed the beginning of this video. Okay, so I took my nine patch. We put novelty fabric in the corners, white in the center, and the other four squares are either blue or green. And then we sliced down the center and I just made kind of an attic windows type layout. I rotated the block so that a nine patch became this after I rearranged the quadrants and we'll be able to um, rearrange these blocks and make a fun scrappy quilt for a little boy. So some novelty prints uh, that would be more uh, boyish and we're going to make disappearing nine patches in my quilt group. 
we made Lemoyne stars um, and then did a sawtooth star variation. So that's where I went off on the tangent to Ohio stars for our summer fun road trip challenge. And I need to do my research on Kansas troubles. And we mentioned um, wonderful quilt shows in Sisters, Oregon and Paducah, Kentucky. So you can check off those four states for our summer fun road trip challenge. And we will be back next week on Tuesday at 8 a.m. for more quilt chat with the True Blue true blue crew. So thank you so much for being with me today and have fun quilting. I'll see you soon.